All right, guys. Today we're gonna make something like ChatGPT in our command line interface. So here I have like a very basic example with ChatGPT, where I'm telling ChatGPT or giving it some information, asking follow-up question, and you're gonna see that the model remembers our original message, so it's able to answer all the questions here. So let's try building the same thing, but with Langchain. Okay. So we'll jump into the code. We have our model here. We are gonna start a while loop so that we can keep asking it question. We're gonna get the question from the user. And then we're gonna feed it to the model. The model takes in a list of questions. So we're gonna give it uh, a list and the only question is our original question. And then we're gonna just print out the result. Yep, very simple. Let's run it. So let's say, uh, what's the capital of uh, France? Gives me Paris. Uh, what's the capital of Italy? Gives me Rome. What's the capital of, uh, yeah, let's say, India? We get New Delhi. Uh, so you can see it does a fine job answering question and you can keep asking it questions. Okay. Now, let's take a look at the chat GPT example here. Uh, what we had here was a little different because we weren't asking unrelated questions. Instead, we gave it some information and then every question depend. Oh, so every question, the answer to every question was in that original information. And we could see chat GPT be able to answer it. Uh, so we didn't have to tell it every single time who I am, uh, uh, my age, where I live, and things like that. Okay, let's try the same example with what we have. Okay, so I'm going to copy paste this. We're going to start a brand new one. Uh, so in my first question, let's give that con context. Okay. And then it tells me, nice to meet you, Bob, uh, and then how can I assist you? And things like that. Now let's say, okay, wait, let's, uh, let's actually start over. Uh, okay, here. So we're gonna say, I am Bob, I am 19 years old, and I live in Atlanta. Yep. Uh, it says, nice to meet you. Now, remember what we asked that here, we asked, uh, what's my name? How old am I? Where do I live? Let's do the same thing. So it does not remember. Okay, let's try the next question. Um, does not remember. The third question. Uh, does not remember. So this is not what we want, right? We want the model to remember the original information so that it can keep answering this question. So let's take a step back to look at the diagram that we have over here. So by default, when you're using Langchain in this way, Langchain does not have a concept of memory. So every time you ask a question, it's a brand new chain, brand new information going to the model, and then you get the output. The output over here is not fed back into the model. The prompt isn't either. So every time you ask a question, it's like a brand new run for the model. And because of that, you're gonna see that it does not remember the context here. Because once this data is spit out from the model, so what do you like to do in Atlanta? Whenever we are in that output, the next question we're asking it, what's my name? We're, that's our prompt that goes into the chain in the model, but the model does not remember what it said before. Hence, it does not know what my name is, how old am I, where do I live? Okay. So we need to do something about that. Okay. So that's where the next step comes in, over here. So what we need is the concept of memory, something like this. So what we, what we want it to do is, let's say we have a prompt. Every time we have the prompt, before asking to OpenAI, we need to store it in some memory. 
think of, think of it like the brain, right? Like you need to store it there. You ask a model and then whatever the output is, you put it back into your memory. Now your memory or your brain knows about the original prompt and the output from the model. Now, when you have the second question over here, right? Before feeding that second question to the model, you're also gonna feed in information from the memory to the model, okay? So now the model's taking in your prompt, but it's also taking in all the previous question and answers uh, that were asked or given by the model. Now, when you ask OpenAI the new question and provide the previous information, it will be able to answer uh, uh, questions using information from the previous Q and A's. Okay, so let's do it through an example. I think that's going to make it much clearer. Now uh, we're going to keep the bulk of the code same here, but we're going to now add a, a list that's called past messages. Okay. Now every time the user gives us the question, we're going to add it to memory. So this is our memory. Every time we get the question from the user, before feeding it to the model, we're gonna store it in our memory. So it's gonna look something like, uh, right? And then our user question. Now the only thing is rather than, this is only gonna be a string, right? Instead of that, we want it to be converted into a message, okay? So let me just quickly get that uh, import for you. Uh, let me just quickly find it, it is over here. So we have human message, which is the questions we're asking people or asking the model and AI message, which is the message that the AI gives or the model gives back to us. And we don't really need this. So when we're adding it to the, to the memory, instead of adding the string, let's just add the, uh, let's just add the message, right? So we're going to just quickly do human message and then our message, which is the question. Okay, so now if you look at the diagram, uh, we're doing this part. Uh, before asking it to the model, we are doing number one, which is adding it to our memory. And the next thing is, of course, to ask the question to the model so that we have here. Now, the other part is step six over here. So taking the output and storing it in memory. It's going to be very simple as well. All we need to do is in our past messages array, we need to append the result. And again, before directly appending the string that we're getting back, we want to append the AI message. Okay. And then we're printing the answer out. Okay. Now you have a loop like this. Okay. Um, just to recap, we have our memory, which is a list. We ask the user for a, uh, for a question. We store that question into our memory. We ask it to the model. We uh, get the response, add it back to memory, and present it. So what you don't see here right now is over here. We are still passing only the user question to the model. So even though we are storing the data in our memory here, we're not passing the memory to the model. So instead of passing the user question, we want to give it all the messages. So uh, the naming might be a little confusing because even though it says past messages, so let's just say this is instead, we can call it all messages. Okay, Because we are appending our uh, new question to it. Uh, okay, so now this should work. Let's give it a go. So we're going to do the same thing. Let's go to the chat GPT prompt we had here. So I'm going to write the same thing. I am Bob. I am 19 years old. I am live in Atlanta. Okay, now let's say, what's my name? It knows I'm Bob. What's my age? It knows I'm 19. Where do I live? And it knows that I live in Atlanta. Okay, so you, this is very similar to what we had here. Okay, we just don't have a UI, but the logic is exactly the same. 
Now, we have looked at both how to have a Q&A without memory, which is the default mode of Langchain, and then we have it with memory. The implementation that we have here is very hacky, and you can, you can find like so many problems with it. Like for instance, right now the memory is a list. Every time the program shuts down, we lose it, right? It's not in a persistent storage like Postgres, Redis, Cassandra, SQLite, MySQL, and all those. The other one is just a lot of code to be writing every time we are calling the model and we need to use memory. So this is again where Langchain is very helpful. Langchain makes uh, the concept of memory modular. So we can customize it, we can move it around, and we can pass it to whatever model we, we are using at the time. So in the next couple of videos, we're gonna not build memory like this. Instead, we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at how Langchain uh, uh, tells us or recommends us to use the concept of memory, the different libraries and packages that they give us to, uh, to use memory. And then finally, we're gonna also take a look at the different uh, memory types. What I mean by memory type is you can have your memory in Cassandra, in Redis, in MySQL, in Postgres. So we're going to look at all the different options, how can you spin up the database instances, how you can connect it to your LLM, uh, and all those fun stuff. That's going to come up in the next video. But hopefully in this one, you got an idea of how Langchain deals with memory. And if you had to quickly whip up memory in, in like a few lines of code, uh, this, should, this should get you there. Uh, okay, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.